Hi guys, Squall here, and welcome to another train simulator video. We're in a class 47, class 47 diesel. We're uh, in Reading Station at the moment, in some of the sidings here. We need to collect our... Uh, we need to collect our consist. I think that's the right word, isn't it? Which is a bunch of... Um, what do they call them? Sea, sea cows, I think they're called? Empty sea cows. And um, we've got to take them down to Acton Station. Now, we're not, uh, we're not timed on this one, as you can see. It's uh, pick all this stuff up and then go down to Acton Station. There's a very good reason why I've chosen this route today. And I'm going to talk about that now as I start to move around and change signals. So let's uh, bring the display up. Release the brakes. And we'll get moving here. 15 mile an hour limit. So we need to pull forward and change these points. Okay, so the reason is uh, a new DLC is coming for Trains in World. You may or may not have seen this. Train Sim World, obviously the, the successor to uh, Train Simulator, which is what we're playing here. Now, the DLC was originally slated for an August 24th release, but I think there's been some delays because the uh, release date has now been pushed back to September the 14th. However, I tried to get hold of early access to um, the new DLC, which is called uh, the Great Western Express. Uh, Trains in World Great Western Express is what it's called. Speaking of which, that is a HST. And that is in the new Trains in World Great Western Express DLC. The 125 mile an hour intercity HST. So that's going to be in there. Um, as well as a. I'll tell you what, we'll go through the details in a minute. Let me just change these points. And then we'll get moving. Uh, so we want to do that. We've got a few of these to pick up, so there's no point waffling. Uh, let's reverse. So yeah, I tried to get hold of a early access version. I, I asked Dovetail, you know, is there a possibility of me getting hold of it early and, and show you guys? And they didn't say no, they didn't say yes. They said, well, we'll try. We'll try and give you a, an early release, an early build of it. Um, but, you know, we're struggling to hit the deadline, and then they put the release date back, so... You know, they clearly are uh, up against the wall. So I don't know when I'm going to get to play it, if I'll get to play it before release or not. So I can't show you, I can't show you it. I've not seen it myself yet. But my partner, Games Planet, are giving a discount on the pre-orders. Uh, so it's cheaper than it is on the Dovetail Games website or even on Steam. Uh, there's a bundle as well, in case you don't have the heavy haul. You can get the bundle or you can just buy the thing on its own. Uh, but I must stress, I haven't played the DLC, the new one, the, the Great Western Express. I've, not, I've seen the video... I've seen the blurb, but I haven't played it. Um, but what I thought we'd do today is take a trip. One second. Let's get the braking right. I thought we'd take a trip along the same line as what's going to be released on the new DLC. Let's couple that in. There we go. Put it back into forward. So that we can kind of refresh our memories. I'll show you the line in a second. Um, th this is basically the line that is going to be in Great Western Express and I wanted to sort of drive down it and refresh our memories so that when the new one comes out we'll be able to compare it against this one um, but yeah just quickly going back to the Games Planet thing if you do want to pre-order it and bear in mind that pre-ordering is always risky it's a risk reward thing we don't know how good it's going to be or how bad it might be um, so there's a, a big discount if you pre-order it. Just do what's best for you. I'll leave the links in the video description if you want to go and take a look at the price. Um, you know, if you can get it better somewhere else, great. If you can get it from Games Planet and save yourself a few quid, fantastic. I'll leave the links in the video description. Uh, if you don't want to pre-order it, then obviously when I get back from Gamescom and this thing is actually released, then I'll, I will cover it for you. And, uh, and then you can make your decision then. But obviously uh, the pre-order pricing will have finished uh, on August the 24th when it actually releases. So, first of all, we're going to uh, just get this thing hooked up. I'm going to show you the line itself. Like I say, we're in Reading. We're going to be heading down towards Acton today. Now, Acton Station uh, is actually just outside of London Paddington. 
Oh, there's another HST going past. Let's make sure we go far enough forward this time because there's a point there and there's another point here. I think it's I think it's this point that we want. Because we need to go on that section, grab that one, and then go to that one, I think. Um, let's kill the power. Hit the brakes. And, yeah, there we go. So if we change that point now to here, we'll grab this lot, and then we need to come forward again, change it to that one. Let's hit the reverse. There we go. So what I want to talk about is what is in the new DLC. What is actually in Trains in World Great Western Express? Well, I've watched the video. I've read through what information I could find online. Uh, some of the, the details are uh, not present yet. So, you know, I'm not sure of some of the stuff. What I can tell you is the DLC contains three locomotives. We've got a 125-mile HST, which is what you just saw going past there. Obviously, it's going to be done a lot better in Train Sim World. We've got a Class 166 DMU, which is your frequent stopper service. I have covered a Class 166 uh, in other videos that I've done, and I've also covered the HST. And then there's a... Sorry, yeah, Class 166, and then there's a Class 66 uh, diesel loco, which is a DB Schenko Red, uh, which is going to give us some freight experience. Now, obviously, if you've got CSX Heavy Haul, um, then we've already done the freight thing already. So the big pull of this one is, in fact, the passenger service. That's what we're all waiting for, um, the passenger service in Train Sim World, which we've not had so far. We've only had the freight side of things. Right, let me uh, hit the brakes there, couple that up. Well done. Now pick up sea cows in main siding 7, which I assume is that one. Yes, it is. So let's pull forward. So we need to go forward at this point now. Uh, so what else is in there? We've got the three locos. We've got uh, a full 24-hour timetable. So again, in the, the you know the way that Train Sim World kind of operates, it operates differently to Train Simulator. So what they do is they have a 24-hour timetable, and the trains on those timetables are constantly running. So no matter which one you decide to jump into all of the other services will still be running. Uh, so we've got that. Um, we've also got in-depth tutorials, they say, which were, you know, I think was something that was missing from the initial launch of CSX Heavy Haul. Uh, if the trains, for example, the HST, if the train is as detailed as it should be, look at that, that's like the third one so far. If it's as detailed as it should be, and I'm talking kind of flight simulation level of detail here that's what train simulation should be right about now if that's the case then just like flight simulation set the brakes we're going to need a manual we're going to need uh, a good manual we're going to need tutorials to sort of guide us through we're going to need all that good stuff more importantly than tutorial though i think is a good manual and it remains to be seen like an operator's manual is what you should get with a train uh with a loco but I don't know if we're going to get that. It says we're going to get in-depth tutorials, so we'll see. I, I don't know what it's going to be like. We'll have to wait and see. Also, you've got uh, what Dovetail calls the Simugraph technology. Simugraph technology, which is the kind of buzzword for um, accurate... I'm, I'm going to put air quotes in here. Accurately modelling the performance and movements of the trains. So all this kind of linkage stuff, uh, all the weight and physics, they've kind of given it a name, called it Simugraph. Uh, and of course, the whole thing is dropped into the Unreal 4 engine, which is what Trends in World is, the Unreal 4 engine. Unlike this, which looks a bit dated now. Well, looks very dated now. <laughs> Trains in World obviously looks pretty cool. So if you stand inside a HST in Trains in World, you know, for what I've seen just from the, the video, it looks pretty nice. It lights up very nicely. Um, it's going to look really cool. I would hope that a lot of the systems are modeled on the train, on the loco itself. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Let's get that link through. Hit the brakes, make sure we don't push it into the uh, the barrier at the back there. Uh, let's bring this up, link that through. Hello. Thank you. Right, now a couple of sea cows in main sidings three. Why have we got more? Dude, I've just been there, haven't I? 
Oh my god, right, so we need to go back out and then we need to go down this side. So I need to clear that one there. I need to clear this one. Crikey, they make you work for your supper. I mean, these things are not full, so, you know, they're pretty lightweight. They're not hard to move around. Uh, so I want this siding here, coming up to this siding here. So I need to get forward of this point here and then reconfigure everything. Uh, so yeah, I've got the whole Unreal 4 technology going on. And from what I can see, or what I've read and what I've heard, it operates out of London Paddington. Now, it goes from London Paddington as far as Reading, according to the promo video uh, that I watched, which has Matt Pedelson in it. And he's the senior producer, so he said London to Reading. Now, in actual fact, you know, the Great Western Main Line goes further than that. So, let's step back in history a little bit and have a look at, or, you know, have a think about what the Great Western Main Line is, or was, and then we can see what we're getting. One sec, let me just get forward of this thing. Where's the point? Where is the point on this thing? Can't actually see it. It must be here somewhere, but I can't see the, uh, I can't see the yellow connector anymore. It's a little bit worrying. Okay, let's uh, hit the brakes there. Have a look at the overhead. Okay, it looks like it's uh, automatically rerouted us down that one, which is interesting. So we need to go down here. Like that, like that, like that. That looks all good. I'm guessing they're not under manual control. Wow, that took a while to get moving. So, yeah, the Great Western Main Line. I don't know how much you know about the Great Western Main Line. Pretty significant line uh, in the UK. Opened way back in the 1830s. I mean, 1830s. Just think about that. That's what? That's 175 years ago. 1830s. The line... When it was opened, well, it went from London Paddington. London Paddington is kind of like West London. I don't know how well you know England. It's West London, and the line goes west out to Bristol Temple Meads. That was the um, the original vision of the Great Western Main Line. It has since, of course, been expanded, and it goes in all kinds of directions now. But the line itself was built by the Great Western Railway, and the engineer on that was a chap called Eisenbard Brunel. Now, Brunel pretty famous guy probably one of the best engineers ever born certainly one of the best engineering giants of the 19th century without doubt and his kind of vision for the whole thing was to minimize the gradient on the line so he wanted it as flat as possible and he also wanted to connect as many towns as he could and what that means is the whole line you know he's kind of one of those spurred no expense type things he wanted it flat and that basically meant that they had to build bridges and they had to come up with all kinds of designs, bridges, viaducts. There's even like a two-mile box tunnel, which, when it was made at the time, was was pretty was a pretty engineering feat, to be honest, if you think about that. that considering the technology they had back then, a two-mile tunnel was, was a big deal. I think I just overbreak that. And he actually succeeded. The line was so flat... That it became, it had its own nickname. They called it Brunel's Billiard Table <laughs> because it was so incredibly flat. And we kind of did this by doing lots of surveys, like countless amounts of surveys, and plotted a line, plotted the whole line through where he wanted it to go. Now pick up your final lot in. Oh my, we're not even done yet. Crikey. Where are we going now then? Hey? We already got that. <laughs> Do you know what? I think I might have just done this out of order. How am I going to do this? Oh, man. I just went off the script. I just picked up some... Uh, I just picked up some sea cows from a, a platform that I shouldn't have done. How am I going to do this? Can I trick it? Can I trick it into thinking that we've done this? Or should I just carry on and just skip it? Oh, man. 
you know what? I think I'm just going to carry on. It's going to fail the scenario, though, but if I reverse into here... If I reverse into this... I don't know what... Oh, we'll just go. I can't be bothered. We'll just go. I don't care if it marks it's not complete. We we know we did it. It'll just put an X through that one. We've got everything. It's just a tick in a box. It's not even career mode anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Let's just get going here. We've got a 15 mile an hour limit. I just hope everything else works. Let's get the wipers on. You know, like the, 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 the kind of detail we're not used to in here, the kind of detail we don't get, is something that Train Sim World needs to address. Uh, every loco that comes out on Train Sim World, my expectation is it will be as detailed as possible. So, when you're thinking about buying this DLC, bear in mind that you're not just buying the track, you're buying the track and three locos and a 24 hour schedule. Yeah, so bear that in mind because when you actually look at this, let me just see if I'm on a straight bit, or it doesn't, I'm not going to speed. When you actually look at this, bear in mind that we're in Reading here, what you're going to get in the new DLC is from here to here. You're going to get from Reading to Paddington. Now, the previous one, the 2012 edition for Train Sim, went from Paddington all the way along, branched at Didka, and went up to Oxford. Yeah, so you got... I, I think it did, or it might have just gone to Didka, I can't remember. I, I'm, I think it went to here, though. But all of this is not going to be in the new one. It's only going to go up to Reading. But what you are getting is... You're kind of getting a bundle, aren't you? You're getting locos, you're getting tutorials to go with it. You're getting uh, scenarios, if you like. And a 24-hour schedule. And the other thing that you can do... Is you can actually become a passenger. Which is interesting. It's kind of weirdly voyeuristic. But what you can do is you can spawn in as a passenger. Wow, that is pretty terrible. You can spawn in as a passenger and wait at the platform for a train to come in, get on board when the door's open, get on board, get in, sit down, and then the train will just operate. Which is kind of, kind of weird and kind of fun. I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy it or not. I guess it depends how detailed the scenarios are. Like, if they're really detailed compared to real life, then it might be kind of fun, cheap way of experiencing the line. I don't know. But, let's face it, the whole thing with the new train sim, the new DLC that's coming out, is about passengers. Now, they've not really showed it very much in the video, but what they're saying is, you know, we've got proper passengers here. We've got passengers that walk around the platform properly. The doors open, they get on, they sit down, they get out of their seat, they walk back out again. That in itself is pretty interesting. Because if you think about what we're currently used to, we're currently used to weird, quirky passengers walking up and down the platform. Walking, you know, clipping through things, looking very, very kind of awkward and stuff, or standing around in weird poses. And then the train turns up, the doors open, and then they kind of disappear inside. They never really get on, they just kind of despawn. And then when you flick to the inside, there are some passengers there. That's what you actually get. It's not realised I've not gone there yet, look at this. It's probably realised when I go via, via this one. Go via Reading Up Goods, whatever that is. Oh, we've already done that. <laughs> I've made a complete mess of this scenario, I apologise. I mean, the whole point is to see the scenery, really. Because this is what we're going to see in the new Train Sim World DLC. We're going to get a look at this. Let's get some acceleration going. So yeah, it should be an end to the whole quirkiness of passengers. Um, if you've ever played a game like OMSI, the bus simulator, uh, it has kind of similar graphics to Train Sim, this Train Sim. It's that kind of era of graphics. You know, dated, basically. But even, you know, that was developed by two guys, and even they managed to get some kind of passenger movement going on. Even they had passengers that walk onto your bus, buy a ticket from you, walk into the bus and sit down. Now, if they can do it, I'm sure that Dovetail Games PLC, who are a huge company now, pretty certain that they can pull that off properly. So I'm expecting to see proper passengers 
you know, no passengers walking through scenery, getting on the train, sitting down properly, uh, maybe even pulling out a newspaper or looking out the window or even chatting to each other, even that would be fun. Just like the proper experience, the proper sim experience, that's kind of what I'm pitching my expectation on this. Because this is next gen. So it needs to take it needs to move the boundary significantly. But we'll see. We'll see what it's like when it comes out. The other thing to to look out for is um, you know, I want to see what this is like. You see this kind of AI vehicle aspect. Uh, and the detail of the modeling and how well they behave. It needs to be significantly better than what we see here for it to succeed, I think. You know, we know that Unreal's engine is pretty good. We know the graphics are pretty good. The lighting is superb compared to something like what we have now. But the layout of the scenery is down to the, the map designers. And as you can see here, there's already quite a bit of detail going on. And the frame rates are pretty high. So it needs to be better than this. And it needs to be more accurate. So I've got a big... It's just a shame I'm not going to be around when it comes out because I've got big expectations for this. I, I hope it delivers. Because if it doesn't, then... Well, I don't know. It's going to tarnish subsequent DLCs, isn't it, really? They've done the freight thing. Now it's time to sort of move up and do the passenger thing. But yeah, maybe that explains why we don't get... Um, quite so much track we only get up to Reading we only get up to Reading we don't get all the way uh, down to Didcot or Oxford or anywhere like that and I hope we get better wiper blades and better rain effects <laughs> does this window open? I don't think this window opens no apparently not so yeah that's that's what I wanted to say I just wanted to kind of give you my thoughts on the whole thing and what my expectation level is. The HST... The HST is... It's an iconic loco. It's... it In its own right. It's one of... It's one of those locos in... British... In British Rail that is... Iconic. And it needs to be done properly. You know, we don't have... Proper high-speed trains yet. I mean, this is the big irony of, of British Railways, you know... Having been one of the pioneers of, of rail, having been there since the early 1800s with rail, we are now, in this country, lacking behind. Uh, lagging behind a lot of what, you know, people like Japan and China are doing, and even France, you know, with the high-speed trains. We don't have anything like that. We're still track limited. We've still got 125 mile an hour trains going around, which by today's standards... It's not very high, but then you could say, well, the country's not that big, is it? You know, in, in comparison to somewhere like China. But then look at Japan. You know, the UK is arguably comparable in size to Japan. Japan's more fragment, fragmented and mountainous, even harder to get around. And yet they've managed to punch holes through things and build high-speed rail. So, I don't know, why, why can't this country? That's a completely another debate. But the HST, you know, when I get into the HST in Train Sim World's Great Western Express DLC I'm expecting to be able to look around click on everything I see all the systems will be operational you know hardly anything will be missed out you know but maybe the fuse boxes I'll forgive them if the fuse boxes don't work I'm not bothered about that stuff but if I see a button I want to be able to click it and have something happen let's put it that way I don't know about the radio call stuff if it's present or not but We'll see. It's still not worked out where I am yet. We're about to go through Twyford, which is here. And it still has no clue where I am. I think I've broken the scenario. Weird thing is, we don't seem to be able to go uh, past 70 miles per hour. Even though we've got a track limit of 125. This poor little diesel just can't cope with that. Needs some more gears, I think. But this, uh, this line is, it's pretty important. It always has been. Ever since it was built, it's been pretty important. In fact, it, you know, probably led to an awful lot of growth into West, out of West London and beyond over to sort of Bristol area, uh, 
did cut. It even links now. It goes down to Bristol Temple Meads, and then it was extended down to as far as Exit and St. David's. So, you know, it goes all over the place. It even branches off, I think, from, like, Sw it goes to Swindon. After Didcot, it branches up to Oxford, which heads north, or it carries on uh, kind of westerly into uh, Swindon, which is on the way to Bristol Temple Meads. But then when it gets to Bristol Parkway, it also then goes north up to Cardiff Central, which is in Wales. Um, so, it, you know, beyond what Brunel did, it's expanded quite a bit. And currently, I think in the UK currently, they're still electrifying it. Like, they're trying to electrify the whole thing, but uh, the project is very, very expensive and very, very big. It's I think it's the largest engineering project on this line since Brunel built it. So it's uh, it's costing billions. But obviously, once it's all electrified, I mean, looking at all this here, none of this is electrified, whereas I think... Well, you'd have to go and look. It, it details a lot of sections which have been electrified. This may be one of them now, I'm not sure. There are sections which are not yet done. But the goal is to have it all electrified, which is cool. Now, Just Trains um, did a DLC as well for Western Main Lines. So the original DLC, I think, came out in 2012. Just, Just Trains did one last year, which I covered. I did a couple of videos on the Western Main Lines. I don't know if you saw those or not. Um, but they go all the way down to sort of Bristol Temple Meads and Exeter St. David's. It goes all the way up to Oxford. So they kind of took, took where Dovetail left off and built the rest of it. What will be interesting is once, tra once Dovetail released their first passenger DLC, which is what this is, are we going to start to see third-party development? Because there's not, not even a whiff of this at the moment. And this is what I find it a little bit weird. Third-party developers are still releasing DLC for Train Simulator, but I've not seen... Well, I've not seen... It's not to say there isn't, but I've not seen a single one sell a product for Train Sim World yet, and I don't know why that is. Is that because they're not allowed to? Is that because they just don't have the tools for it? Is that because they've not been given the tools for it yet? Um, is that because they're still trying to sell stuff for Train Sim World... Uh, for Train Simulator, and they don't want to get into Train Sim World yet? I generally don't know. If anybody does, then post a comment and let us know because I don't know why there's no DLC for Train Sim World just yet. But maybe they're all waiting for passenger stuff to kick in or some other technology to, to be dropped. I don't know. Maybe they just don't understand Train, uh, Unreal 4's editor and they, <laughs> they just haven't got into it for that reason. Right, so this thing's completely bought. Uh, Acton is 32 and a half miles away. Looks like we're clear at the moment, so we can have a quick look on here where we are. So yeah, we're on this section here. And we're going to be going through Reading. It says Reading Up Goods, which was that. Oh right, okay, so that's outside of Reading. Yeah, Slough. We should be going through Slough fairly soon. There it is, 18 miles. Slough, I've been to Slough before, and it's not an impressive place, let me put it that way. It's not one of, uh, it's not one of England's finest towns. I don't, I don't want to sort of, you know, talk ill of it, but I actually bought a car there once. It was, um, if I remember, it was, a, it was, it was the first second car that we had in the house. It was around about the time, I think, that I had a, a Ford Galaxy. Um, a big car and we needed to have another car to go with it like a little one because we're at the point where the kids were it was at this at this kind of juncture where I needed something to go to work in and also the wife needed something to take the kids around in and you know we, we needed a cheap second hand car so I bought this uh, Volvo it's like a hatchback I think it was quite old it wasn't very expensive and I bought it from a guy in Slough and it it was okay I mean considering how much I paid for it it was an old car it ran okay. A little bit of a whiff of petrol fumes. Um, but, it, you know, when I bought it, I had to go to Slough. Went once to take a look at the car, then went another time to pick it up. And um, that was my only experience of Slough. And I, I came away thinking, hmm, not sure I'd want to live here, kind of thing. <laughs> that was my impression of it. 
Twyford, something I've not really been to. Langley, I've never been to. Southall, Acton, I've been to. A few times I've been to Acton. By the time you're at Acton, you're very much um, into more high density population. You're like, you know, you're, you're right, you're getting right into the kind of density of London at that point. Now, what stadium is that? Where are we? We're just outside of Slough. Twyford is behind us. I actually don't know what stadium that is. Um, we must be somewhere near... Oh, it's not a stadium. Hang on, what is that? Actually, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's like a football... Oh, it's a football field. Floodlit football field is what it is. I don't know what it is. Um... We'll have to see roughly where we are. I think we're probably... If we've passed Twyford, we could be at Taplow, somewhere around that area. I like how we're, very, we're like very, very, very gradually building up speed. Like, the slowest speed gain ever. But notice, look at the, look at the track gradient here. Look at that. It's like... It's like a billiard table. Look at it. Thing is, when when they built this, it pretty much set the bar for everybody else. You know, in terms of how flat you can make a line, nobody else had made a line quite like this. And so it set the bar for all subsequent lines. It's crazy flat. And it's perfectly suited to high-speed rail. Now that is... Looks like a, it's a couple of cooling towers, possibly a... Where are we now? One second, what are we going through? I can't read that! Why doesn't it tell me down here what we just went through? It's not even marked as a station on the line, bizarrely enough. I'd love to know exactly where we are. Hang on. Let's see if we can... Uh, yeah, it's just not on there at all. Oh, we're just passing the London Paddington to Swansea. They are all the way to uh, Swansea. Yeah, what's this one? Slough is coming up. Okay. This still says 18 miles away, though. These distances are not actually changing, even though we're about to get. This is really broken, isn't it? Like, because I didn't do this stuff, it's it's really got confused about where the heck we are. Oh, God. I'm not paying attention! I just went through a yellow thing and now we're emergency stopping. RIP! RIP. Oh, man. We're going to go full stop now in slow because I didn't see the... Um, the slow down to 40, I was too busy trying to work out where we were. Oh my god. Oh, it's not the end of the world because we had to slow to 40 anyway, so... We just gotta go via zero first. If this was a full cargo though, it would take a while to get going again. Let's kill the wipers. I don't understand why there's so much water around here. Look how dry it is out here. It's like graphics inconsistency, isn't it? Okay, full stop. Release the brake pressure. And get going again. <laughs> That's what you get when you're not focusing on the line. I wasn't actually expecting that because we've not had a single thing for the entire journey. And then suddenly as you get to slow, they reduce it to 40. So yeah, I think we can safely ignore this this uh, distance thing because Slough is very definitely not 18.45 miles away which means Acton is not 32 either in fact you can see where we are we're at least halfway through the entire track so 
So yeah, the things I'm looking out for for the DLC. Detail of the trains, like inside, systems, that kind of thing. I know the lighting and graphics are going to be good. What's the systems like? I'm going to be looking for the passenger experience. I'm going to be seeing how good they are, how well they walk around on the platform, how many of them there are, how well they get on and off the trains, and just generally behave like passengers. And if I can spawn as a, as a passenger, I want to be able to walk around and sit where I want and, um, you know, have a fight over a seat. Because that's what a real passenger service is going into London. It's, it's basically fighting to get on the train and then having got on the train, nicking the best seats as quickly as possible. Uh, that's basically how it all works. Honestly, it's like a war. Okay, we've still got a flashing light. Uh, and the third thing I want to look for is environment. Let's call it environmental um, aspects. Things like the AI vehicles that are moving around. How many vehicles are we going to see on the roads? Is it going to be like it is now, with like three or four vehicles, or is it going to be is it going to be dense? Are we going to see level crossings? Not necessarily on this scenario, but maybe on on subsequent ones where the the cars actually pull up properly uh, and wait and then carry on afterwards. Are we going to see you know, occasionally we'll see things like diggers operating in current scenarios. Are we going to see that? Uh, anything else? Are they going to add some other stuff? Any more kind of dynamic scripted stuff? You know, you, you can't say there's no scripting in Unreal because there certainly is scripting in the Unreal Engine, but how much are they going to use of it? I guess we're going to have to wait and see, but they're the three things I'm looking for because... Oh, and also just, I guess, graphical improvements in terms of performance. I know they've... I know the Unreal graphics have been fantastic looking, but there are times when the performance takes a bit of a beating. I, I know they've optimised a lot of stuff uh, since the original CSX Heavy Hall. One sec. Let's make sure we clear that down. Let's go, get it under 40 for this section coming up. But it's no good having wonderful graphics if the frame rates are tanking, that's the thing. Yeah, this makes no sense that, that this hasn't dried out yet. Let's watch the speed here. There you are, track changing, that's why we're having to lower the speed. Well, I think this is a quite a significant release for uh, Dovetail because if they if they get it wrong, if it's not as good as it should be, it's gonna it's gonna damage the reputation of Train Sim World itself. I think, like it has to be right. It has to be good. That there's just no other way. They, they have to, because they've been saying all along, this is like next-gen train simulator. This is the next-gen experience. Um, they have to deliver. If they don't deliver, then every subsequent DLC, people are going to be thinking, hmm, it's probably just going to be like the last one. It's probably just going to be frame-hungry or just not moving the platform on significantly enough. So I do hope they do it. I really do, because we all deserve a decent train simulator at the end of the day, but we shall judge it. We should judge it when it comes out. No, it's just totally broken. So Langley, Southall, and Acton. We've still got a 60 speed limit through here. So the frames on this, you see the passenger spawn in then. The frame rates on this are very good. I've been on scenarios where the frame rates are not very good. Uh, some of it does seem to depend on the weather you choose as well. And I think the same is true of Trains in World. If you pick, like, snowy, foggy weather, because of the reduced graphic load, the frame rates are really high. If you pick a sunny day where you can see for miles, you'll see that the Trains in um, World frame rates can take a beating if you go through a detailed part. But that's not unusual. I uh, think we've got yellow coming up again. Now this could be a full stop, so we need to be careful here. Do 
So I think the water is gradually going. It's taking a long time, but it's gradually going, I think. Can't actually see the next one. Just throttle off until we've got visibility. Okay, we've got a flash in, which means we're probably going to have another speed change again. Possibly back down to 40 with a lane switch, who knows. Let's just make sure we're in the cab. Nope, it's a single. So we need to get ready. I just hope this isn't broken, you know, because my because the scenario here is broken. I hope it's not scripted based on that, because if it is, we're in trouble. Whoa, HST's not being stopped. Maybe we just had to wait for this guy. Maybe we're about to jump track or something, I don't know. With a bit of luck, it's gone yellow by now. Let's keep cruising. We can easily break down from 30. It kind of looks like it's gone yellow, so I'm going to accelerate a bit. Yeah, it's a beautiful part of the world. It's a, it's a great line, this line. such a... Um, because it is so flat, it's just... It's just amazing to drive through. Okay, let's punch it a little bit. I think we can probably chase the lights now. Yeah, they've just gone to two. Alright, so we know we can do at least 30 and not... and not be catching up the status. So I reckon we can get like 45 out of it, maybe. Well, yeah, here's another thing, the models. Look at the models of these trucks. Like, they need to get better assets in the game. They need to get better truck models, better bus models, better car models. Uh, they've only focused on the UK for this one, so I'm expecting to have a lot of UK assets available. But when they start to go over to, like, I don't know, Germany, when they do expansions in Germany or... Whoops, I nearly missed that then any other country, they're going to have to build assets for that as well. I mean, these are the things that people don't think about, is when you do different countries, you need to, like, everything around it has to look authentic. All the lights are different, the signalling can be different in the way it looks, in the way it operates. But then if you can see a road, like, the road can be different, the, the lighting on the road can be different, the cars on the road will be different, the style of housing will be different. Like, all these different things are all different assets that have to be made. And that takes a lot of work in itself. I mean, obviously the trees don't tend to differ apart from the kind of trees, but, you know, trees are trees at the end of the day. But all the man-made structures will differ from country to country. And they have to be built. It's a lot of work. Developing something, developing a scenario that looks like it belongs in that country is a lot of work. Yeah, the window is finally completely dried up, so that's cool. Now that looks like a red light to me. And it's just gone to yellow, so yeah, we are chasing something. Possibly a stopping possibly a stopping commuter train or something. I think we need to keep it between 30 and 40. Still, weather's picked up nicely. Let's do a trackside view. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Wow. 
Wow. Did I catch that? No. I'm on 100% break. What a scumbag! Every time! Every time I do... I can't believe it. I just go for a scenic camera and get wrecked by an emergency brake. Every flipping time. If this was career mode right now, I'd be getting nailed. Come on, get moving. That's twice I've managed to do an emergency brake. I can't believe it. See, if I was to just stay here, I could do it fine. But that's not what I want to do. I want to look at the scenery. And for some reason, some stupid game design reason, whenever you're in this mode, all you get is a little yellow light there, right? But nothing audible. And if you do this to get rid of the display so you can have a look at the scenery, you get no visual and no audible. Nothing at all. Like, would it really have hurt to give you the audible warning? It's not like you can do this in real life. So what's the big deal? It kind of forces you to sit here. Ah, but Squirrel, if you want the true sim experience, you should always be first person. You can't do this in real life. I know. I know that, but I want to look at the scenery. I seem to be struggling picking up speed here. I'm still chasing yellow dots. I feel like something's broken on the train. We seem to be really struggling to get speed going. It kind of feels like I've got brakes on. Let me just double check they're released. I've got 100% throttle. And yet, I can't go faster than 21 miles per hour. What's going on? Did I break something on the train? I know that you... Is it this one? It's not this one, is it? There are some trains that you can... You can actually break the, the power on the axles. Let's pick up speed now. It's just doing it very slowly. There are some that are modelled that way that you can actually burn things out and then you can't... Uh, you'll lose power for the rest of the scenario, but I don't think this is one of them. Oh, I just went green. Yeah, you can see it's kind of getting a bit more built up now. Hayes and Harrington. What I need to work out is where the destination is. <laughs> just look how it just still hasn't done it. It still doesn't know where we are. Acton reception. Let's try and figure out where that is. So all in all, I would say, looking at this line, uh, you know, have, coming down it again, um, which is what I wanted to do, is just refresh my memory about this line. It's a pretty well done line. Like, of all, of all the, the lines you can get in Train Sim, this is one of the better ones. It's very detailed. Very detailed. It's very well done. It's, you know, you get a feel that it's very, very British. Considering the platform it's running on, it's it's probably one of the best ones. So when we go to Train Sim World, I'm expecting big deal. I'm expecting a big, a big deal. I think I'm expecting a lot, and I really don't want to be disappointed because I hate it when I'm disappointed. South Hall, one mile. We are definitely behind a commute and stopper. It's probably right here right now. We're here. That thing. Whatever that is. It's going to Paddington from Oxford. It's a three car passenger service, I think. Oh, we're going to run that red light then. I got slightly panicked, I'm not going to lie. Now 
Now he's gone straight through, so... Whatever speed he's doing, if we can match the speed, we'll be fine. South Hall Station. Yeah, if you look at this, this is one of the weaker points of the current design. The way that the, the buildings are very boxy and they just look like they've been planted on top of the surface, because they have. The way that the cars kind of follow rigid lines around the road, because they are. But then you look at the detail here, and ignore the passengers, which are rubbish. The detail here is um, on the platform and the lines, like the overhead lines, everything around it is just fantastic. Like all these signals and stuff, all these power lines, looks great. So it better not be worse than that. Let's speed up a bit. I think that's the class 66. Oh, sorry, the one. Is that the 166? I think it might be a 166. The DMU. The one that's in the new train sim world. It's quite an easy drive, that one. It really is. It's like a, a proper modern... It's like a proper modern EMU. Although they don't... If I remember, they don't slow down particularly well. That's the other thing, actually. Physics-wise, here's a question. Yeah, here's a question. So, like with a freight train, like I'm hauling now, if I've got no... If I've got no freight... Like, if this was filled with coal or something, it would be significantly heavier. Yeah? And we know that works on train sim. What happens with passengers? Because on train sim with passengers, there's no discernible difference between you picking up passengers and you not having any that I could ever tell. Like, whenever I stop at stations, if a whole lot of people get off, I don't for suddenly feel the train feeling lighter. And if a whole load get on, I don't, it doesn't suddenly feel heavier. What I want to know is, in, in the train sim world, in the Great Western Express, because they've modelled passengers correctly, does it take, like, an average weight of each person? And so every pack that gets on, it adds, like, another 100 kilos to the, to the weight of that carriage? Is it going to do that? I really hope so. I never thought of this before. Because they've got this simugraph technology, in theory, if, for example, you know, passengers tend to spread themselves out fairly well on a commuter train, but they don't do it significantly well. In my experience of, you know, over a decade of commuting, I can tell you that most people will get on at the front of the train. Because they want to, when they get off again, they want to walk into, straight off the platform, go to work. <laughs> That's what commuters do. Even better than that, they'll, they even know which carriage stops at which part of the station. So they know when they get back to their home platform, they know which carriage they need to be in to get off and be directly opposite the staircase leading out of the station. So they tend to cluster. They'll cluster at the front or cluster at a certain carriage number. They cluster like this. Net effect of that is you might suddenly find yourself with, I don't know, 80 passengers in one carriage and only 10 in another. It can happen. Is Train Sim World going to model this? Are we going to have different amounts of people getting into different carriages? Is it going to model the weight inside each carriage? Will you be able to feel the fact that 100 people just suddenly got on your train? Is it going to feel a ton heavier? I don't know. That's an interesting question, actually. I think I might ask them. We're going to be not far off our destination here, I reckon. Just keep, I need to get eyes on this signal first. I think it's that one, though. Looks good, doesn't it? It's quite a nice loco, this one. 
get back in here. Before the inevitable happens. Yeah, next stop is a red. Currently. I want to have a look at the whole red map and see where we are. Don't know what we're waiting for. So we are here. Act and reception. Section 2 is here, which looks like there's currently something in our platform, which could be what's causing the hold-up. Of course, the real question... Is it going to move? Yes, it is. I'm still worried about this being bugged out, you know. This is the echo. So acoustically, the game knows that we're... You hear that? Acoustically, the game knows that we're on the side, under side of a bridge, so it echoes the sound. Man, this thing. Considering this is empty, this is really slow. If this was full, it would be taking a long time. Can't wait to see what it does when we get there. It's, just, it's gonna be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Cause it doesn't know. It doesn't know that we've finished the scenario. It still thinks we've not picked up the less concert contest yet. I think I just did it out of order. And it's completely thrown the game. Like the game's designers didn't consider that anybody would do that. No, you must pick it up with this, then this, then this. The thing is, though, it failed to recognise that I picked something up out of order. That's the, that's the even worse travesty. The fact that it didn't go, hang on a minute, you shouldn't have picked this one up yet when you picked it up back here, and then fail the scenario. That would be even that would be better than doing what it did, which is let me carry on and just not be able to cope with it. So look at that station there. It's really, you know, it's quite detailed. get ready for some action here. We're going to drop down to 15, then go into the siding. We're almost done, whether the game thinks we are or not. So yeah, don't forget, if you want to take a punt at the pre-order, the links are in the video description. If you'd rather wait until I've made a video, that's fine. But the pre-order price won't be around then. You'll probably have to wait for a, a Steam sale or something later in the year if you want to get a discount. Okay, let's throttle off. And we need to get the speed down. Fairly quickly. We need to drop to 25 for this bit and then 15 for the next bit. Perfecto. That was a beautiful bit of braking. I was like, racing. Actum Reception 2. I presume that's going to be here, somewhere next to this one. You can see that the points are switched that way. I 
Oh look, a full one. Uncanny. Looks pretty cool. Right, we just need to decide exactly where we want to stop now. There's a HST going past as well. How cool is that? That looks nice. Okay. I'm going to try and get lined up alongside this one. I figure like this is the best place to stop it. Let's go for that. And the game still has no clue. Look. <laughs> the fact that we're here and it still has no clue. Well, it's not going to end this at all, so I'm going to have to end it. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, that was like an hour long or something. But, um, so that, we went from Reading down to London Paddington. Which is, actually, we went from Reading down to Acton Mainline. Paddington's just a little bit further down the road, though. If you look where we are. We're here. And Paddington is actually this sprawling mass here. Uh, so that's most of the same journey of, as Trains in War Great Western Express, which I've talked about at great length, so I won't mention it anymore. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget the links are in the description if you want to pre-order it. Until next time, take care. <laughs> and happy training. <laughs>